thawed overnight. And it looks even worse in the tank now. I don't know if something's growing in there or what. There, can you see that? I, I've never seen that stuff in a tank before. Maybe just algae or something. That could be because of the water. Probably just hanging out in the water. Whatever it was. Alright. All right. Um yes, on my last episode or video, whatever, replaced all the battery connections. Got it started. The starter was there was an issue with. All the battery, the cable ends. Um, there was water in the tank uh, and like a yellow algae type stuff, but it all came out with the water. That was good. Now I'm going to take this, the engine covers off, and there's probably a mouse nest in here. There was in the air filter housing. So I'm going to start taking it apart. on this model that throttle bracket is attached to the engine housing With some of these colors the throttles come down to the bottom that goes governor linkage uh, oh I can leave I can leave that bracket on I don't see a lot of these controls a couple of years but not many the old home, which is, I wouldn't trust. I'll replace that. Oil cooler. Oh, 
a little bit of more mouse debris with an acorn in it. Oh, those usually break. Huh. Someone's had this apart. That's not the right screw. It's too short. Um, that can stay. The cylinder head, and they all—they are always broke. They always break. Off. Oh, it's not that bad, but it's still. Oh, this has got the fancy coils on it. The um, I think it adds one more horsepower, apparently. Lots of chewing. I'm gonna have to take this engine, um, get some more of these covers loosened off. There's, the cooling fins are completely blocked on both sides. Usually like the mouse nest will be right up here. This one, it's all down low. So, uh, just listening. Blown head gasket on this side. I can hear it. Yeah, blown head gasket. I, I'm pretty certain. I can only hear it on this side. I don't hear it on this side. I'll probably change both, though. They were pretty bad for head gaskets sometimes. Then I think they redid the gasket, though. So the newer style gasket's a lot better. It has like a metal ring in it. I'm going to get this ready to take it outside and blow all this mouse debris out of here. This thing was ran with the mouse nest in it. That's why the head gasket's probably blown. Um, it'll be fine. So I'm going to seal up a few holes in the motor so I don't get debris down them. The breather grommet here. Just some rags of some sort. I'm going to seal this carburetor up, which is going to have to come off to be cleaned or replaced. The, the kit for this is more money than an aftermarket carb. And the aftermarket Kohler carbs do work good. Some don't, but that the Kohler ones seem to work good. Okay, that sealed, that sealed. Um, it's bothering me that it needs a head gasket, but I'm going to get it running just without doing that. At a later date, I'll probably tear this whole thing apart. The flywheel magnets are probably loose underneath the flywheel that run the stator to charge the battery and the, run the electric clutch. Okay, so I'm not going to try and get all these tins out. I'm just going to use my air wand and get this cleaned up the best I can.
right, I'm gonna take this old fuel filter off. Ooh. Yeah, we're not even gonna use these fuel lines. Take that, uh, that's the pulse for the fuel pump, comes from the crankcase. That's still nothing wrong with it. Probably for safety's sake, you don't wanna put your tools in here, but I got the battery disconnected. That fuel line is hard as a rock. I don't want to use this. That's the Kohler fuel line tool for removing fuel lines. It's pretty awesome. That is trash and it stinks. That's going right outside. I really don't like the smell of old rotten gas. It gets to a point where it's just uh, really strong and it stinks the whole shop up. I can already smell it. Take that ground for the carburetor off. Take the wire for the fuel solenoid off. Yeah, don't leave your tools in the flywheel. Then you put the cover back on and not a good idea. All right, there. Throttle linkage. We'll unhook that. A little black plastic tab that just unhooks and slides out of the way. And then your anti surge spring. I just gotta unhook that. I can. I can never seem to do that by hand. I always need a pair of needle nose pliers for that. Just to kind of bend it out of the way. There. All right, now, gasket. Just kind of move that around the rod there. Carburetor is off and I'm gonna take this to the carburetor bench and uh, take it apart and see how bad it really is. I have a feeling it could be really bad. We'll see. Okay, there's the carburetor off that tractor. Um, it's pretty scary. I wanna clean the outside before I take it apart. Because the fuel tank was under the seat, um, there's a good chance, maybe this isn't that bad, the fuel wouldn't have been constantly running in as the needle and seat went bad. So there's a good chance whatever fuel was in this just evaporated out the um, the vents, and it might be okay inside. So just clean the side of this first. blow it off with air. I don't have gasket kits here for this because it's got the accelerator pump on it. So I'm just gonna quickly take this thing apart. And get this split, this fuel solenoid. It's like a two-piece thing. I'm just gonna split that apart, oh, other way. I always get that backwards with the wrenches. All right, there's the one part loose. There's the other part. There's our main jet. 
just smelling it there. Doesn't smell that bad. Not as bad as the uh, fuel filter and fuel line did. There's a spring in there. That's your little, when you turn the key on, there's a magnet, 12 volts magnet, pulls that in, that little piece of metal, which lets the fuel go through and then up the main jet. And yeah, as you pull, that's how that works. And it's actually moving. I usually pull these apart and they're seized solid rust and old fuel. I want to get that part out of there. There's a little spring in there too. It might be, oh, there it goes. That's pretty clean in there. Wow, cool. All right, now I'm gonna get the bowl off. It's held with this uh, little hose. That's the accelerator pump as, as you hit the throttle up. It makes a vacuum and the vacuum transfers and then the diaphragm moves and squirts a little bit of extra fuel so you, you don't get like a bog. I don't know. It probably doesn't work anymore anyway. I think the diaphragm gets really stiff. Oh, there's another hose right there. That's where the fuel... Okay, vacuum, fuel gets shot right through there. Like a little extra shot of fuel. That's nice and clean. Just a quick spray with some uh, carb cleaner, and this will be all. This will, this will be fine. Let me just get this. Out. I'm I'm messy when I'm working on stuff. Okay, I take the this top plate off, which houses the idle circuit. Three screws. It's that one I already loosened, it holds the ground. That is the ground wire for the fuel solenoid. And Kohler puts that on because some of their intakes aren't metal, they're plastic. A lot of them are just plastic. Oh, I hope this gasket doesn't break. Yeah, it's... Hmm. It wants to break. Okay, I'm probably just going to spray some curb cleaner through and see if it's going up through the idle passages. Oh, but there's a, ah, I need to get that off. Okay, I'm gonna very carefully This gasket off. Now this is just for me. This is not the way I would I would do this for a customer's machine. And I'm probably not supposed to cut towards myself either. Ah, I trashed it. Damn. Okay. Yeah, there's the jet I wanted to get out. This screwdriver should work perfect. Yeah. If anyone knows what that screwdriver comes with, it's a brand of chainsaw. And they're probably no, can't get them anymore, but it works really good. It's got that little tab on it. I know what chainsaw it came with. Sold quite a few of them. Uh, that's a little stiff coming out. There. Idle pilot jet. 
Now I can get one oh, that won't fit. All right, got my special screwdriver. I ground down to do these emulsion tubes and jets. Oh, there we go. It's moving. That's great. Over there. That. Mm, that's stuck for sure. Oh, there it goes. Ah, oh, I just hit it the wrong way. Pullers have a um, one end that's press it so it can only go in and out one way <laughs> needle looks brand new well I'll test that though all right that's off that's off that's ready for uh I gotta scrape that gasket off and clean it up and hopefully I have that gasket All right, I went and looked for this gasket. I don't have it. I knew I had it, but it's gone. Maybe fell behind the shelf. Um, I'm gonna make one, because I want to hear this thing run. So, get my gasket paper. It was close to the same thickness. It should be fine. So, line up. It's like arts and crafts time here. Just trace. holes traced out all right so first off I'll punch those holes through one two three three no There's that. Now I gotta cut this out. Nice little pair of tin snips I've had forever. They work really good for stuff like this. Around those edges. Just cut on the inside of the line. Because when they trace them, they, they always seem to be a bit bigger. I'm going to order the proper kit for this if it works out. I'd rather keep the original carb if possible. Unless I can buy off online the better. That carburetor from Kohler would be a bit between three and five hundred and Canadian pesos. Turn the edges off. How does it fit? That way. Oh, that'll work. That will work. Let's scrape the rest of that other gasket off. I'm getting all kinds of dirt down these holes, but I'm going to clean this thing out still. Not a big deal. All right, I'll, I'll finish that up.
Okay. Clean that out. I sprayed all the passages through. Blown it out with air. That's okay. Get this card bowl. I'm not going to take that accelerator pump apart, like I said. Not today. Um, our idle pilot jet. You can see through it. There's little... You should be able to see all the way through it. And spray through it. Good job. cleaner piece of towel for this stuff. This isn't my normal workbench, so. Uh. All right, all these holes clear. There's holes through the sides of these emulsion tubes. They're all clear, so that's okay. Our main jet, just give it a spray, but it was spotless. There. Clean this guy up. A little, uh, I could look the proper name up for it, but it's part of the anti uh, or the fuel solenoid. There, that's the solenoid too. I guess if there was a little piece of something in there, it could work its way up, get in the idle passage, which would make it surge, and then surge up and down. There, it's ready to. Not quite ready. Got my vacuum gauge here. These gloves off now that I'm done with the carb cleaner stuff. Get that off. Back on. Float pin. Float pin. My needle's in there. I'm just gonna give a seat, a quick test, see if it'll hold some vacuum. I'm just watching the gauge. I find the, the less vacuum it holds, the better. And if you pump it right up to the top, yeah, it's gonna, even if the needle and seat were bad, it's gonna hold vacuum. You just put a slight amount and it should hold. And it is. Usually if they're no good, that'll drop right away. And that that that'll let too much fuel into the carburetor. The, the fuel pump will overpower it and this thing will run like uh, garbage. There. If it didn't pass this, I'd probably be throwing this carburetor out. I'd try a new needle first. And if that didn't fix it, then then it's a new carburetor. Because that seat in there is made out of brass and it's not saveable or replaceable. Well, you can save it. You can, a Q-tip and some valve grinding compound. 
I have fixed them before. They weren't great, but for my own personal use, it was fine. All right, put this thing back together. Emulsion tube. My wife is much more organized than I am. It, it helps to be organized. I'll put my uh, idle pilot jet back in. All right, and I'll put the cover on with that homemade gasket. I don't know if you can buy just that gasket from Kohler. It probably comes in a whole carb kit. Can't remember. It's been a while. I don't see as many Kohler commands coming in for service anymore. I won't tighten that one down because that one's got to come back off for the ground. These other two I will. There. I know much left. No, this doesn't go there. This goes here. Okay, we'll put this back together. Let's spring in that piece. Then this washer goes on. I'll just snug those together. I don't know how tight. You can look maybe in the service manual if you want the exact number. Just hand tight, reasonably tight. Bowl gasket. I should replace that, but I don't have one at this moment. Bowl is nice and clean. So, get this back together. That vacuum line and that um, accelerator pump line. <clears throat> Yeah, that all went back together. Fuel solenoid with the main jet back in. I'm really happy I don't have to buy a new carb. The aftermarket ones work good, but OEM always seems to work much better. Easy carb to, to uh, tear apart and clean. Much better than those V-twin Briggs and Stratton carbs. All right, and we'll put this back on the tractor. All right, get this carburetor back on. So I should probably replace that gasket, but it's fine for now. The throttle link hooked up. Black piece of plastic. Oh, I didn't get it. Here, snapped on. Get the anti surge spring hooked back up. There, okay. Can't hook my choke up because it has to uh, go with the, um, the bracket, control bracket. Turn this wire up. Get that hooked up. My fuel solenoid 12 volt, and then my ground. Make this screw out again. I put it back in so I don't lose it. There. Carburetor ground back on. All right, I'm going to now replace 
I should, I'm gonna replace the fuel line from the tank right up to the carburetor. I don't like the smell of what's in it. It's pretty bad. So, yeah, the fuel must have got left kind of in the, in the line for a few years. Okay. Place the fuel line from the tank. There it is right here. There's a clamp and a little piece of plastic, a 90 degree plastic that breaks fairly easy. And rubber grommet, I'm gonna replace that too. So, uh, hard to film, so I'm, cause I'll be in the way. Still water in the tank. So just quick, I got the chain fall on the front and I tilted it right up. So all the water should be running to this bottom of the tank. I may not have had it up high enough. And with the jack. That's just water coming out of the seat.
see if it runs and dries. runs, but it doesn't drive, and the pedal doesn't feel right, so tomorrow I'll take the motor deck off and see what's going on. That's it for today.